God's Word. I'm reading from Exodus chapter 17. Exodus 17, 1 to 7. community set out from the desert of sin, traveling from place to place as the Lord commanded. They camped in the Redidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. So they quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses replied, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to the test? But the people were thirsty for water there, and they grumbled against Moses. They said, Why do you bring us up out of Egypt to make us and our children and livestock die of thirst? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, What am I to do with these people? They're almost ready to stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Walk on ahead of the people. Take with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go. I will stand there before your, you by the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock, and water will come out of it for the people to drink. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the place Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled, and because they tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? May the Lord help us to understand <coughs> his word. I invite my husband to come and have a word of prayer on God's word this morning. Everywhere my wife and I have gone uh, throughout this country, uh, throughout this province, <coughs> we are a team. And uh, team, teamwork works right. <coughs> so myself and my wife are a team. I promised her I would pray for every time that she would preach God's word. And she promised that she would pray for me vice versa. Shall we bow in prayer, please? <coughs> Our Father, this morning we come into your presence. And Jesus, we thank you this morning, Lord, for the sacred word of God. We thank you, Lord, from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation, how it means so much to every Christian person in our world today. And Father, we might pick up many books in our lifetime, but we thank you, Jesus, this morning for the Bible. We thank you, Lord, for the sacred word of God. And Father, this morning, Lord, I pray for my wife, Lord, as she stands with your word this morning. I pray, Jesus, to you either behind the cross. And Father, I pray that people in this place will not see lifting at Tanya Street, but they will see you, Jesus, shining forth to her. Father, I pray this morning that your Holy Spirit will help her, Lord, as she stands with your sacred word again this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the word of God this morning. And thank you, Jesus, for what it means to each one of us this morning here in this place. Father, I pray now you bless your servant and bless your word. For I pray this in Jesus' wonderful name this morning. Give you thanks. This morning's scripture reading, Water from the Rock, is a story that can quite easily fit in today's day and age. The Israelites are walking this journey of deliverance. They have endured the witness and witnessed the exile from Egypt and the parting of the Red Sea to cross over on dry land. Now they're on the safe side. Moses, through God, has proven that he would deliver them. But now they're impatient and grumbling. Why have you done this? We're thirsty. If we were back in Egypt, we would at least have water to drink and food to eat. Questions start to arise. 
and Moses cries to the Lord, fearing for his life. Through the divine instruction of the Lord, Moses and some elders went to the rock, a rock of all places. And with a staff, Moses struck it, and water flowed. <coughs> How many of you are thinking, that's amazing. Water from a rock of all places? To us humans, this seems to be impossible. But we ought to know by now that what seems impossible to us is possible with God. Amen. But for a few moments this morning, let's look at this story from the Israelites' perspective. Here they are living in limbo. They're thirsty beyond measure. Let's just sit and visit with this thought just for a moment. I would suggest, first, that they may be feeling misled. They were expecting a promised land, but yet they're wandering, which seems like an aimless journey, and there's no water in sight. How long have you gone without water? I mean without drinking anything. Well. What are the symptoms of thirst? Not just the insignificant little thought that comes to you that you're a little bit thirsty, perhaps I'll go get a drink, you don't even know what you want to drink really. You just want something. We're talking about dehydration thirst. Well, I looked this up. Dehydration is different in all age groups. The most common symptoms are nausea, dry mouth, <coughs> irritation, fatigue, and weakness. At time, as time proceeds and symptoms begin to worsen, then the people will become confused, experience headaches, muscle cramps, extreme fatigue, racing pulse, Difficulty breathing, seizures, vomiting, unconsciousness, and let's not forget, death. Can you picture it? These people are at wit's end. I can only imagine that they don't know what to do, but they know something needs to be done. And so the grumbling begins. And they asked Moses, why? Why have you led us here to die? Maybe they're unable to think straight. They're tense. The children are crying without ease. The elders are moaning, possibly even breathing their last breaths. The unstable in mind are confused and getting out of hand. These are their loved ones. Do something, Moses. They're crying out, do something. How are you not seeing what's in front of you, Moses? We need water. Perhaps they seem to be ungrateful for Moses, leading them up out of Egypt. But as for myself, I'm beginning to see how they possibly could have felt in these days of uncertainty. Moses seems to be confident of following God, a God he couldn't see. But for the Israelites, though they lived in slavery, they had stability. They knew what to expect. And now they're unsure of every minute. Now what about Moses? He must have had some emotions in this journey too. He walked away from a life of royalty. And he faced Pharaoh on behalf of the Israelites. Moses surrendered to God. And he was not in his comfort 
soul, let me tell you. This was not an easy task. If we were to conjure up a personality sketch of Moses in this passage of scripture, I would dare to explore his underlying feelings. What is Moses not telling the Israelites? <coughs> How does Moses feel with all this grumbling going on? I can imagine that Moses is thinking, these ungrateful people. I risked everything for them. I gave up my secure and regent lifestyle for this. Screaming and yelling, even threatening my life. I saved them from the hands of Pharaoh. No one would just do that for anyone, especially a whole community. Verse 4 says that Moses cried out to the Lord, what am I to do with these people? They're almost ready to stone me, he says. That sounds like a desperate plea for help. What did Moses do? He went straight to the Lord. He is trusting that the Lord, who is leading him, will deliver him. What seems impossible with man is possible with the Lord. Moses experiences faith that the Lord will come through with a solution to this problem. Think back. Maybe deep in your memory, possibly even in recent days. When did you last have complete faith in God that He would see you through an impossible circumstance? God wants to provide for us and meet needs. But first we have to ask. Luke 11 and 9 says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. It seems that when things turn for a different direction than we had planned, we somehow lose focus of who to trust. The Israelites were living in a desperate condition. The Lord sent a deliverer, Moses, and he delivered them. <clears throat> Wasn't the best of conditions. Even after they crossed over <laughs> into the promised land. <clears throat> but regardless, God was seeing them through. Faith is the key. Moses trusted the Lord that when he cried out his plea for help <coughs> against this angry mob of thirsty Israelites, God provided and instructed him once again to go, to take elders with him to the rock that would supply water as requested. The Israelites only needed to ask for water and fully expect, fully expect provision. It took some time. They didn't exactly go about it in the best approach. But Moses saw their desperation and immediately Moses asked God. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he will make the path straight. We must trust God to be faithful. Even when it seems impossible. 
It's not our place to trust, to test God, but to believe in Him and to endure for His sake. 1 Corinthians 1 and 9 says, God who has called you into fellowship with His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, is faithful. We know that life is not always easy. But it sure is more bearable when we have someone to watch over us and to provide what we need opposed to what we want. God knows our needs. And we need to wait on Him for instruction and provision. God is faithful. I have many favorite verses in the Bible, but I think the one that always comes to me is Lamentations 3, 22 to 26. And it says this, Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For His compassions never fail. And this is what I like the most. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait on him. Are you thirsty this morning? Do you have Jesus Christ living in your heart? If you haven't learned by now, <coughs> Nothing that life can offer will quench the thirst and the peace of contentment. Only the water that Jesus supplies can satisfy. Don't let the uncertainty of life shake your trust. If you do not ask, when you're in need, then no one can help you. God only asks that we seek Him first. Are you trusting God today? Will you trust Him? Like the Israelites, we have no idea of what's to come next. They, like us, have to recognize that only Jesus is our provider. Life-giving water only comes <clears throat> from Him. Are you thirsty this morning? Will you come to the rock, Jesus, for this water? Shall we?